Hey everybody, welcome back for another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 video. I'm Matt, and uh, today I just want to do a more in-depth look of uh, a uh, add-on that I just uh, added into my simulator uh, the other day. I put a video out yesterday uh, test driving it, and uh, I found out this morning that the uh, developer just came out with a, a new update, and I wanted to go over the update. I test drove it this morning, and it, it runs flawlessly. Uh, it's definitely a, an improvement from uh, what he had the, the previous version. Uh, it's just more responsive. Uh, so I want to go over that now. So this, uh, for those of you who saw my last uh, couple videos, uh, I was discussing this Microsoft Flight Simulator pop-out panel manager. Uh, this, actually wonder if I can uh, I don't have the link for it handy let me do this I'll go find it in my history all right sorry about that So this is uh, this is the app you can find it at flightsim.to. Uh, I mentioned yesterday it's been downloaded 868 times, um, but so far I think it's been being downloaded for the pop out uh, pop out panel function. The new function that uh, the developer just added is this touch enabled, which actually enables your pop out panels uh, to have full touch functionality. So prior to uh, touch functionality for those of you who have touch screen instrument panels uh, was not implemented for touch for pop-out panels Asobo hasn't uh, implemented that yet this uh, developer has gone and done it on his own uh, so I appreciate uh, appreciate his efforts so uh, the update we got this morning he said good morning everyone uh, version 3.4.1 has been released and it's solely on improving uh, touch panel capabilities so he talks about uh, New, algor new algorithm for general uh, performance improvement. Um, button touches are more responsive. Uh, untouch lag has been minimized. He says you can now slide your finger to pan the map. Uh, he also talks about improved scroll bar response uh, and adjustable flight control refocus. So I test drove that stuff this morning and I'm agreeing with him 100% that uh, that the improvements are true improvements uh, and it's been a, a big difference between his previous version and this current version so let's go ahead and uh, show you what we're talking about so we're here uh, sitting on the runway I know we shouldn't be playing around on the runway but that's where we spawned so that's where we're gonna do it so I'm gonna open up his pop-out manager and you'll see how this works you can see in my uh, touch screens here that that uh, we don't have anything uh, popped out yet So I just opened up his pop-out manager. Uh, it's working on connecting to the simulator. It's connected. It sees the aircraft we're in. So I'm going to hit start pop-out. It pans the map around to see both touch screens. It pops them out. And then it places them. And then it puts us back into the uh, uh, the custom view that that we told it to put us back to when it's done uh, popping panels out so I'm gonna minimize this now and I'm going to go to our uh, new view that I set up here so that we can really talk about everything that's going on and then I'm breaking out uh, the action cam for this video so that you guys can see what I'm doing here to control this I know this isn't the most clear thing in the world but you know that's our cheapo webcam that we have that we're using as our action cam so that's what we got okay so uh, I, I mentioned in the previous video that this bezel that you're seeing here uh, was created by Crunchmeister he's another one in that forum that we just talked about uh, no, I closed that stuff already he's another one that's been helpful in the development of, of uh, some of my touchscreen functionality and, and air manager pa panels here. Uh, so he created the bezel, and then uh, Rose GNU was the one uh, who created the actual touch functionality. So let's go ahead and start test driving some of that stuff. So to start off, uh, we can uh, we can control our radios here. 
So if I hit the standby button, uh, now I can type in like say with 120, uh, 124.8. Tune that in. I can switch it over, and you can see the uh, the responsiveness here. Say we wanted to get ADIS 134.75 or so, uh, and then we can hit transfer. That transfers that directly in, and then we can put say guard in, in the background 121.5. So that stuff all all works flawlessly. The response time is is really quick. Um, I agree with what Rose G and you said that uh, his previous version had just a little bit of a of a lag from the button press to when it actually takes the value. Now it's just it's it's really quick. Uh, transponder, same thing. Squawk three, four, five, six. Uh, we can go split screen to look at our map, uh, and I can zoom in. Can zoom out we can pan and this pan function it it certainly had a little bit of a delay uh, in the last version now it's just it's it's super responsive it's very quick uh, very happy with it uh, what else we can talk some of the bezels here that uh, crunchmeister created so the home screen and then we can click map home screen we can go active flight plan uh, another thing that uh, Roast G and you talked about was these scroll bars. So the scroll bar in the last version wasn't super responsive. Oh, that's uh, my my bad touch issue. Flight plan. Versus this version, that scroll bar is very responsive. So I can change our destination if we want to go. Uh, so like, let's say we want to do a direct to. Um, let's say we want to go direct to Fullerton. Although I might have to do K F U L. K F U L. Fullerton's right there. Enter. Activate flight plan. And you can see now it's taking us direct to Fullerton. So I can go back to the. Back to the map page. Direct to Fullerton. Pan out again. There we go. I can go into my procedures page. Let's say we want to do a approach procedure. Uh, Fullerton, let's say we want to do an RNAV approach to runway 24. I can load and activate that. It's loaded into the flight plan. We can go... I don't necessarily know the quickest way to get back. Oh, I could have... Uh, so I could have just hit map there. And there's our flight plan all loaded in. So this, this functionality is just absolutely incredible. I, I talked about it in some of my last videos. Uh, before this touch functionality was implemented, uh, I would be flying the simulator with my popped out panels like this. Uh, you know, it's fantastic operating the sim with, uh, you know, my three monitors of scenery plus my, my two touchscreen instrument panels. But the fact that every time I would want to control something, either any of these bezel buttons or so whether it's any of the bezel buttons or any of the touch functionality, I'd have to use my mouse to do it. Uh, and it just, it, it totally broke the immersion. Uh, it, it distracted me from flying. So instead of flying, now I'm focused on moving my mouse around the camera and, and uh, panning in and out with the camera views. Uh, and then meanwhile, while you're doing all of that, uh, the simulator stops listening to all of your flight control uh control inputs so you know your your stick direction forward you know pitch and roll your throttle changes uh, so while you're controlling your radios your aircraft is getting all out of control and uh, and it just it it turns normal flying uh, in a busy airspace where you're having to switch frequencies quickly it turns it into absolute mayhem so this uh, these modifications uh, and add-ons are just fantastic for uh, keeping the uh, flight simulation experience realistic with the uh, with the G3X panel. So I thank Crunchmeister and I thank Roast GNU for uh, for their uh, uh, for their efforts. So let's go to the nearest screen here. So again we can look at some of the nearest airports. You got the scroll wheel here. There we go. I think uh, I think that was just my my finger, whether it's dry in the room or what. Um, so if we wanted to go to Chino, 
direct to activate and we can go back to the map page how do I do that <laughs> I still I'm not the best with uh, okay so China oh because we're at China already <laughs> how about uh, Ontario nearest let's do Ontario And now we should see that hmm there we go yeah now we're going direct to Ontario zoom in I can pan if I want to really zoom into Ontario and see what we're looking at there what else we got we got the audio tab we can ident. Looks like we're identing right now, though. So we're squawking alt mode. Put it back to 1200. What other pages have I not gone through yet? We got the setup page where we can adjust the display brightness. Interesting. I don't know what that's about. That might be something that I'm doing wrong. Uh, main menu, com frequencies, so we can change the com one frequency at just in a different page. Let's go back. Whoops. Com two frequency, we can change our nav frequencies. Uh, and then we can adjust our CDI, so if we wanted to use the VOR and then change the VOR course. We can change the VOR course using our, uh, using my knobster here. Um, what else? Barometric altimeter. So I can, again, with my knobster, rotate the outer knob, and you're going to see the barometric altimeter changing. So we can put 3020 in there or bring it back to 29 or 9 or 2. What else? Heading bug would be the other knob here. So if I change to this knob, and it looks like it's the inner, so I can change my heading from, we'll go heading of 090, and we could activate that using, I believe we have, I don't remember how to use, oh, I think it's tap this. I know, I thought there was some way you could tap up there and use autopilot functions, maybe not. But that's where I could use this uh, to now uh, you know, have the autopilot fly us based on the the navigation panel. Oh, and you can see that uh, as I press that stuff, it actually turns on. So if I turn it off nav, you can see the VOR light at the top here. When I when I press nav, you can t it sees it's navigating by VOR. If I change this back to GPS, it changes it back to GPS. Uh, bearing pointers, we can take a bearing pointer and put it on nav1. So we don't have anything programmed into nav1 right now, so that's probably why it's not showing us. Yeah, no data it says in the bottom, uh, bottom left hand corner here. So that's why uh, it's not letting us do that. We could put a, uh, I don't know if I have the frequencies, let's see. Yeah, frequency. I'd have to look look one up. So we're at Chino here. Let me look one up real quick. A C N O. And then if I go to plate for K C N O, and then go to say like the. Uh, ILS or let's do a VOR so nav frequency for the VOR there would be 1124 112 and put that in so it's still not finding that and that might that might just be because we're on the ground here we might still be too far I don't know where their receiver is but anyhow uh, that's some of our navigation stuff what else we got more options down here 
We can turn synthetic vision off. We can turn our wind vector. So now we get, uh, of course, we're on the ground here, so it's saying no data. Back home. And I think that uh, covers most of the pages. So I just want to say thanks again to the uh, to the developers of this, uh, Crunchmeister with the bezel and uh, Rose GNU for this uh, uh, for this um, touchscreen capability and the pop out bezel pin, uh, capability. It's it's really huge. I I'm able to launch my simulator setup faster than I've ever been able to before, which makes me more likely to want to fly the simulator, knowing that the setup time is is quick as opposed to you know really <laughs> feeling like it's a laborious task to to set up the sim uh, and then being able to fly and train train like you fly in the real world where you're uh, not being distracted feeling like you're flying a computer and it actually feels like you're flying an aircraft you don't have to touch the mouse uh, at all from start to the uh, from takeoff to landing so thanks again to you guys I hope this video was helpful for anybody watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one See ya.